from your kind of background, it's impossible to rise again. You are rising again. But the message for today is praise for answered prayers. Praise for answered prayers. God does not stop prayers, he answers prayers. His ears are open to our prayers, but any prayer without praise is protest. Every prayer must be wrapped with praise. Our Father, I say, hallowed be thy name, praise. If you don't hallow God, you will wallow in life. Praise is simply appreciating God for who he is. We don't praise him because just we feel like we praise him for who God is. Praise has to do with the greatness of God. People mistake all. Thanksgiving has to do with the goodness of God. Praise has to do with the greatness of God. Worship has to do with the holiness of God. So we praise him for who he is. And words, songs, clapping and dancing. Prayer is simply asking God to intervene on your behalf in a given situation on the basis of his word. And your relationship with him. So praise for answer prayers is simply magnifying God. In words, songs, clapping, dancing. And asking him to intervene in your behalf in a given situation. But for today, what, what to do in praise to get answers from God? What must I do as to get answers from God? What to do in praise to get answers from God? What to do in praise to get answers from God? We're taking the entire message from one chapter of the Bible. We're taking the entire message from the book of John, chapter 6. Join me to John. What to do in praise to get answers from God? We'll read John 6, 1 to 12. I'll read 1, you'll read 2. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. You read verse 2. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes, and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we get bread that this may eat? Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. There is a lad here which had five belly loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. Finally, verse 12. Shout hallelujah. Looking at this scripture, Jesus had a problem that many have today. 
He was in the wilderness with 5,000 men, excluding women and children. There was no food to feed them. People have been sending messages to even some of you. Look, it's so tough this period. It's not new. It happened to Jesus. No money to pay house rent. No offering in church. It's not new. It happened to Jesus. They were in the wilderness. No food. No what? No. Things were tough. Things were what? No food. So you are not the first to go through it. Jesus was there. No food to feed them. Your own is easy because nobody's looking up to you. Here, yeah, all of them were looking up to him. So if he never did anything, they would have said, look at this wicked man. He brought us to the wilderness and left us. Your own nobody's putting you under pressure. So you are not the first to go through challenge. All you need to do is to know what Jesus did and do the same thing. He said, be your followers of them. Which one? If you follow those who are ahead of you, you get the same result of God. Now listen carefully. First thing Jesus did, instead of focusing on the challenge, he focused on God. He did what? There was a challenge, no food. He focused on God. He said, he lifted up his eyes. When he saw the crowd, he didn't say, oh. He looked up to God. He said, they looked up to me, their faces were lighter, they were not what? I will lift up my eyes to this from whence cometh my help. Your helper is God. Stop looking at the situation. Look at God to intervene in that given situation. Number two thing he did, Jesus, the Bible said when they came to him panicking, he said himself knew what to do. When you know what to do, you don't panic. So number two, seek knowledge. Seek what? Those who do know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. Number three, he called two of his disciples, Philip and Andrew. He said, Philip, how do we get food here? Philip made a statement. He said, 200 penny worth of bread can't feed these people. There's no way. It's not possible. The one he sent was Philip. Was who? Andrew only heard. Andrew said, there is a boy here who had five loaves. I know what you can do that you can turn story around. Philip was very negative. In every church, you have the Philips and the Andrews. A Philip will tell you, boy, it's not possible. Things are tough. And Andrew will tell you it is possible. Number three, have a possibility mentality. Have a what? Believe that God is too big to be harassed by your small challenge. Andrew had the possibility mentality. He knew that with Jesus, all things are possible. Don't carry a grasshopper mentality, otherwise you keep hopping. Then number four, the, there was a boy there who released his five loaves. I'm sure that was his lunch pack. That was what? But he put his loaves into the hands of Jesus because he trusted Jesus that he is not a user but a blesser. The boy released his lunch into the hands of the multiplier. Until you are a giver, you may die a pauper. Number four, be a giver. Be a what? What you don't release is the, that which you have not is the reason why nothing has multiplied in your life. Anything you keep with you can never multiply. And then now the fifth. Jesus said, make the man sit down. Don't give me any anxiety. Relax. Number five, avoid anxiety. Avoid what? He said, make them sit down. No pressure. No what? No pressure. You can't see God in action being anxious. I repeat, you can't see God in action, 
been anxious. Make the men sit down. They've come to you. Hassan, Hassan. Tell them, calm down. Don't give me stress. Hey, 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 school fees. Calm down. God is too big for me to panic. In Psalm 39 verse 3, the GNT version, GNT, and I was overcome with anxiety. The more I thought, the more what? The more trouble I became, I could not keep from asking. The more I thought, Anxiety is a troubled feeling in the mind caused by fear and uncertainty about the future. Every time you are afraid of your future, you are certain of your future, anxiety will set in. And God said, be anxious. The breeding ground for anxiety is the mind. Is where? There are people who, in the midst of this pandemic, they always, some of people have had BP. Their BP has gone up. I said, why will a Christian have hypertension? Hypertension is simply hyper plus tension. You remove whatever is giving you tension and disconnect the hyper. Many people right now, their BP went up this period. Why? We don't know how we go feed. We don't know how what is happening. No, everything is going down. No, calm down, my friend. God is too big. God is what? God is too big. I pray you have understanding. He said, "Wherefore guide up the loins of your mind. Guide them." First Peter chapter one verse thirteen. Anxiety can paralyze your initiatives. Stop accommodating fear for tomorrow. Your tomorrow is sure. Your tomorrow is what? Have faith in God and his word. I've not given you the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. Second Timothy 1, 7. And the joy shall live by faith. Take no thought what you will eat. He will provide for you. God is too big to be harassed by a small landlord giving you quick notice. Now you hear what God said in Philippians 4 verse 6, the New King James Version. Be anxious for what? Hold on. Be anxious for what? Are you anxious for something? God said for nothing. That is the prescription of God. But in everything... In what? By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So prayer, supplication plus thanksgiving equals miracle. But by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request, just make your request known to God. Stop panicking. Just tell him this is the reason. This is all I want. Oh, hello. Make it known to him. He will step in. Stay tuned. David Abume will be right back. Imagine what the human race would be like without social interactions. No talking, no communication, just everyone leading a solitary life. Now visualize a world where love forms the basis of interactions. Shared laughter, memories and value. Salvation Ministries introduces Get Our Connect, a fast, convenient and simple way to communicate with those whom you love. Keep in touch with friends and family, connect with your colleagues and business partners, stay updated on latest information and trends. Your social networks all in one. Head over to Google Play Store or App Store to download. Also available on the web at www.getterconnect.com. Get a connect, spreading love and value through words. Welcome to Our Salvation with David Ibiomi. Does that make sense? So I have an enviable future. I refuse to panic. So I lift up my eyes unto the east from whence cometh my help. 
The God who built the world in six days, your life is too small for him to mismanage. To him that is joined to all the living, that's hope. He said, if I gave you Jesus, how shall you not with him freely give us all things? Romans 8, 32. You mean you will give you Jesus? Is it that small 10 billion that will now make God not to sleep? He never sleeps, not slumber. Your 10 billion, your own, is it what God will worry God? 10 billion is like a teaspoon from an ocean. What will an ocean feel if you take a teaspoon of water? Your own 10 billion now, you can't sleep. God can pay it with one bread. He pays it for you. And somebody under pressure, God will pay that debt. In the precious name of Jesus. So I stop worrying. I will stop worrying about what to eat, what to drink. And what to wear. <laughs> he said to him that they joined to all the living. That's all. Exodus 9 verse 4. Your case is not closed. Your case is not what? He said take no thought what you will wear. Take no thought what you will eat. Take no thought for your heavenly father knows that you need them. So it means he will supply if he knows you need. Relax yourself my friend. Make them sit down. Make them what? Don't give me stress. Behave like Jesus Christ. They come to you. Hey, hey, hey. Tell them, calm down. Calm down. When we bought the property where the cathedral is being built, the people that sold us the land came. They said, sir, the whole money has to be paid. They don't want, we told them we would pay. They said, no, we want them paid. No, I didn't make an announcement in church. They said, we want the entire money paid this month. I didn't, no, not even my colleagues in the office that I called, said, please, let's hold a conference meeting, board meeting. How do we do? <laughs> not, I didn't consult nobody. I was myself. I was preaching. I was doing everything. No sign. Am I the owner? Am I the owner? It is your property you worry for. Who is the owner? Who owns you? Then why are you worrying about your life? You don't know, you own yourself, that's why you're worried like that. Who owns you? You're sure? You're not sure. The way you're panicking, you own yourself. <laughs> it's your father. Have you seen any child who worries for school fees when the father is alive? Wait, wait, come again. Have you seen any child who cries school fees when you can pay the school fees? As parents. Have you seen one before? Why will God be your father and you're carrying your hands on your head like as if you don't have father? Say ignorance. Say ignorance. We know we have father, but we are not conscious. Your children don't panic. They say, mommy, they say we should pay school fees. They just tell you. They give information. They say, make your request known to him. Make it known to him. You have not made the request. You are here putting hand like this. I am. You are not I am anywhere. <laughs> you won't die. <laughs> he said, man, don't pay me. Pay me go away. You won't pay me. So here. He said, make your request known to him. Don't bother, relax. I didn't want they come to a church. You know what? They are warning us. I was just myself. That money was paid before the month ended. I just went to him. It's your land, though. I'm not the owner. I will build my church. He said, the women will build this church. I slept. If I tell you, I never prayed one day. Not one prayer point. I just told him. You are the owner. Me, I'm sleeping. You never sleep, so that me, I can sleep. My father, you don't sleep, so that me, I can. I like that like everybody. I say, it's your church. You pay the money. If you know who God is, you won't be doing what you're doing. He said, take no thought, Matthew 6, 25 to 33. All you need to do, be content at every stage. Be content at what? Because life is in phases, men are in size. You know what God said in 1 Timothy chapter 6, 6 to 8? But godliness with contentment is great care. For we brought nothing to this world, and it is certain we carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us dare for what? There would we relax yourself. Don't give yourself stress that you have not bought carna, you won't breathe again. I'll give you some reasons for anxiety. Some reasons for what? Some reasons for anxiety. Because most people, it's not the devil. 
some reasons for anxiety. Number one reason is covetousness. Number one reason is what? A is covetousness. It is one major reason for anxiety. Hebrews call it Anyuku, big eye. Luke 12, 15. And he said unto them, take it and beware of covetousness. For a man's life considered not in the abundance of things which you have. You see somebody shoe now, he can't sleep. He says, see the kind of shoe my colleague is wearing. So even in church now, you're drawing shoe. He said, child, silky man, silky man. See the kind of shoe that guy wore. Your movie now is shoe you're seeing. Because of shoe now, your BP went up for shoe. shoe. <laughs> I told him, I said, watch is watch. As far as it gives you time. It gives you what? Whether it's Rolex watch. Oh. They have even Rolex in Nigeria. <laughs> one day, I saw one of my staff. I said, boy, if they catch you with this Rolex... <laughs> They will arrest you. Do, you. do you know they have LV of 500 naira? You don't know. <laughs> they just put LV on here, yeah, like they just put LV, LV like that. <laughs> Some they put VL. <laughs> 1,000 naira. You wear it one week, it will just. <laughs> they have LV bag of 2,000 naira. Women will tell you, LV. They put LV on top. When you carry it like one week, they, the leather will start peeling. <laughs> Why are you killing yourself over nothing? Because you saw somebody carry an LV bag of $5,000, you can't sleep again. Carry the one from $2,000, all this LV. <laughs> when you use the one week, you keep it at home, polish it, and leave it there. Don't kill yourself. Don't kill. Most of us, anxiety is because of confession. Because of what? Number two, why people are anxious B is haste. Is what? They want to get this fast, fast, fast. It's a heat. That believeth shall not make haste. Isaiah 28, verse 16b. If you believe that God will provide, then why are you putting yourself under pressure? You shall not make what? You make haste. You just know that it will come when it will. God said, No good thing will you withhold from them that what? Walk uprightly. Yeah, you're not saying God shall not like any good thing. It will come when it will come. Don't try to go before your time. Don't make haste. See, doubt. See, is what? Why many people are anxious is because of doubt. They don't believe God. All this is the, it is the feeling of uncertainty. Even when you're preaching, they say, ah, are you sure God will do this one? No, 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 God is too big. He said, dead that seek the Lord shall not what? Stop doubting God. Hear what God said in Luke 12 verse 29. Look at what God said. And seek not ye what you shall eat. Or what you shall drink. Neither be ye that of be ye of what? Relax yourself. He says, seek not to what you will eat, what you shall drink. Refuse to doubt, I will supply them. May God supply all for you. Yeah. Say loud, amen. Yeah. He said, if I feel the best of the air, is he you in my image? I will not take care of. Why are you doubting God? If you want to doubt, doubt your doubt, but don't doubt God. You see, if I can feed the best of the air that have no hands to plant crops, the animals in the bush that cannot plant crops, how much more you in my image? It is your doubt that has made God not to manifest. If you want to doubt, doubt yourself, but not God. God is too big. God is what? He brought food for Israel from heaven. He gave them manna from heaven. That is who God is. He prepared table in the presence of witches and wizards. Why are you doubting him? Relax yourself. Relax yourself. Never doubt God. D, fear. D, what? Fear. He said, the thing I feared most has come upon me. That which I greatly fear. Job 3, 25. That which I was afraid of has come unto me. Job was afraid, so he was sacrificing every time. Job 1 5. Because of fear. Because of what? Job 3 25 and Job 1 5. He was afraid. He refused to be afraid. He refused to be what? Some people are so afraid, they cannot even stand near a person's shadow. That is a level of fear people have gotten. When you come near them, they will shift. As you're coming, they shift. They say, oh boy, 
Shift, oh. Shift, oh. Don't allow anybody to touch you. Some people living in church, they say, boy, don't near him, oh. Don't near him, oh. If you're near him, we don't know. Fear. <laughs> Fear. Anything you are afraid of, you may be victim of it. Be careful. I'm not afraid of sickness. That's why you can't come near me. Because I have eternal life which forbids me to be broken. I can't have his life. Stop panicking. You are God's most prized possession. Your worth to him is incomparable. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Not the sin, not the pain, not your shame. Jesus says, All that the Father giveth to me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will no wise cast out. John chapter 6 verse 37 God is waiting for you with open arms. Come to him as you are. He will give you life, freedom, peace, transformation. Wherever you are, pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from the dead to save me. Now with my mouth, I declare you Lord over my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name. They worship together regularly at the temple each day. Met in small groups in homes for communion and shared meals with great joy and thankfulness. Acts 2, 4-6 In your daily pursuit of a fulfilling life, you need the support of a spiritual family. A heaven where you can enjoy spiritual comfort. A brook where you can be refreshed with God's word. And a military backup for fellow soldiers in Christ. Enjoy these and much more in the Cell Fellowship, designed as a close-knit setting for your personal revival, growth, and blessings. It exists in three structures, the Home Cell Fellowship, which is suited for everyone, the Corporate Cell Fellowship, which is convenient for corporate offices and organizations, and the Unique Cell Fellowship, which is made for students. No matter your preference, there is a place for you. Locate the nearest Cell Fellowship Center to you and begin reaping the benefits today. Imagine what the human race would be like without social interactions. No talking, no communication, just everyone leading a solitary life. Now visualize a world where love forms the basis of interactions. Shared laughter, memories and value. Salvation Ministries introduces Get Our Connect, a fast, convenient and simple way to communicate with those whom you love. Keep in touch with friends and family. Connect with your colleagues and business partners. Stay updated on latest information and trends. Your social networks all in one. Head over to Google Play Store or App Store to download. Also available on the web at www.getterconnect.com. Get a connect, spreading love and value through words. Join us next time on Our Salvation with David Iomi. This message was brought to you by Salvation Ministries, home of success.